So welcome to a new subject in the course. Okay, this subject is all about blockchains. Okay, the underlying technology of all cryptocurrencies. So in this module, just briefly the contents, we're going to be going over the fundamental values of a blockchain, blockchain evolutions over time, okay, 3.0 potential solutions to the last evolution of Bitcoin, uh, blockchain, sorry. Then we're going to look at a visual of the blockchain, block headers, and block data or transactions. And then we're going to touch on the decentralized consensus that blockchain operates on again. Okay. Now, in this module, we are going to be moving slightly away from the Bitcoin blockchain. So we're going to be looking more at Bitcoin's blockchain in particular when we look and learn more about Bitcoin and the Bitcoin subject on this course. But for now, we're just going to look at the blockchain technology in its own right, okay? Blockchain as a technology. So blockchain's fundamental values. What makes blockchain work? Okay, what are the values? Well, more, most importantly, we've got encryption, okay? We've got encryption of the blocks in the chain. We've got distribution, okay, so the decentralization of these blockchains. And that is what combined gives us a blockchain. Okay, it's this um, cryptography and decentralization. We've been over this before, we are familiar with these words by now. Okay, encryption and distribution. The encryption acts as the security for the blockchain, for all the technology. And the distribution, the decentralization, is the anonymity factor of blockchain. Okay, it is everywhere. And that is what creates the blockchain, which we call the trust machine, security and anonymity. So the evolutions of blockchain technology. Well, as we know, Bitcoin was the first implementation of blockchain, okay? It, blockchain was designed to facilitate Bitcoin, okay? Now, it wasn't necessarily founded for the sole purpose of that, but it has been designed to... Um, for the best case use of Bitcoin. So blockchain 1.0 is simply a database. Okay, it's a, it allows a currency to store its transactions in the ledger, which is the blocks of information on the blockchain. Blockchain 2.0 is essentially a smart computer, and that's what we link to Ethereum. Ethereum is a company who owns Ether, which is their currency. So you might, you know, Ethereum at the moment is the number two cryptocurrency. And Ethereum as the smart computer, their blockchain technology, which their company has developed, okay, it's an iteration of Bitcoin's blockchain from transactional properties over to a smart computer that allows for dApps, the first time we've said the word dApps in the course, decentralized applications, okay? A smart computer that allows decentralized applications and smart contracts to operate within it. Now, those two words we're gonna learn more about in the Ethereum subject of this course, so let's not worry too much about those for now. But Ethereum has built up a blockchain which allows for the security and the anonymity for platforms to be built on top of it, okay? And again, we'll go over this in future slides and lessons, 
But briefly, uh, as an example, Google has its data centralized. It's in data uh, warehouses, if you like. Okay, it's all centralized in data centers. Whereas, and all the applications are run from these data centers. Okay, all the information is pooled into data centers. Ethereum is allowing applications to be built in a decentralized fashion where the information is not owned by Ethereum. It's owned by its user, okay, in a decentralized manner, which allows the information to not be controlled or manipulated, okay, it allows the user to control their information. And also smart contracts, just briefly, smart contracts are a way for um, code to be used in replace of a third party, okay? So it allows a contract to be executed on when certain conditions have been met, and it allows a code to decide whether those conditions have been met or not. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. We're not going to talk too much about that. We will go into more detail in the Ethereum subject on the course. And then blockchain 3.0 is for scalability. Now Cardano, or ADA, as the ticker symbol for Cardano, um, again, another top 10 cryptocurrency, wants to enable microtransactions on its blockchain. Now you might think, well, surely Bitcoin can do that. Well, not necessarily at the moment, okay? Um, no doubt that will come with a future kind of update or fork in the Bitcoin um, uh, code. However, at the moment, Bitcoin's blockchain has a size limit per block, has a capacity limit. And there's only so many transactions that can be uh, processed into a block on the chain. And this means there is somewhat of a limit to how frequent and how fast these transactions can be made. Now, if we were to replace Visa or MasterCard, okay, on our phones, on our contactless, with Bitcoin at the moment, Bitcoin wouldn't necessarily be able to handle the transactions per second that those companies can at the moment. Okay, Bitcoin is more so a asset at the moment and larger transactions can be made but buying your coffee in the morning with Bitcoin is something which can't really be done at the moment. Okay, so Cardano is version 3.0 of the blockchain technology. It wants to focus on scalability. Now, in terms of potential solutions to 3.0, okay, the scalability issue, a potential solution is off-chain transactions. So, in terms of blockchain, all the transactions are actually recorded on the chain. Now, this is too complex for this course, so I won't get too into it. But if it was off chain, it allows for multiple transactions to be pooled together and then added to the chain in one go instead of multiple small transactions being made and added individually. Okay, this would increase the transactions per second TBS. So a network of blockchains would also increase the transactions per second, okay, where multiple blockchains actually link together to multiply the transactions per second that that blockchain can process instead of a linear chain like Bitcoin, like 1.0. And then we have a third solution, which is everyone to become a miner and share the computational power and data. So as a user of Bitcoin, some of your mobile data may be used to pr help process these transactions at a, must, uh, a much faster rate. Now, again, these are just potential solutions. However, we could see some of these be implemented into Bitcoin in the near future. So let's look at a visual of a blockchain. Now, this one in particular is prioritizing transactions. As you can see, T5 on the right is a transaction. And we can see this kind of wavy flag shaped uh, shape called B. 
that is the blockchain. So going from the top, on the right hand side, the top one is B, it's blockchain. Then we see four blocks, the dark blue, okay? Then we can see each block has its own block header, H0 to H3. Then we can see the block data, the squares in the middle, and they contain the information, the transactions within those blocks. And then at the bottom we have the block metadata. Okay, these are things like uh, the timestamps, for example, and the signature for the block. And as we can see, H0 is linked to H1 and H1 to 2 and 2 to 3. Okay, um, or vice versa, sorry. And this is the chain. Okay, so we can see the blocks, they're dark blue. And then we can see those dotted arrows at the top linking the block headers, okay, like a chain. We can see the blockchain in this slide. So this is how you should visualize what, uh, for example, Bitcoin looks like with its transactions. Now, there's multiple differences, but as a visual, this is perfect to start understanding what blockchain looks like. So now if we go into more detail, we can see... The actual blocks okay so b2 if we go back we can see b2 there we've just highlighted the entire block and have inflated it okay so now we can see the block header h2 now remember these block headers are what are linked to the previous block they contain a block number a current block hash a previous block hash and all the other relevant data okay that is needed to link these blocks together okay so within the block header we have the block number the hash of the current block transactions and a copy of the previous blocks transactions okay now this is all hashed together to produce the hash of the current block okay so the contents of the block, D2, is hashed. Okay, now I know we've not gone into this just yet. But the hash is the encryption for the block. Okay. So all of the transactions within a block are put through a hash function, a cryptographic hash function, which produces an outcome. And that is rehashed with the current with the previous block's hash to produce the current block hash. Okay, so that's where we get those two values from. Now diving a little bit deeper, okay, if we inflate a transaction, we can see it's got a header, a signature, a proposal, a response, and endorsements. Okay, so all the relevant data needed to make sure that the transactions are in chronological order. Okay, and also that we can find individual transactions. Okay, now that is done with the Merkle root, or the Merkle tree. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. And finally, again, all blockchains need decentralization. Okay, they need a consensus model to allow them to operate without a central authority. Okay, so no centralized data confirmation. Blockchain requires a consensus algorithm from each user or node on the network to verify a new block to the chain. Now if we look, the new block is added, okay, and it's linked to the previous block. So everyone must agree that the current, the new block to be added is in the right sequential order to the previous block. So that is essentially blockchains as a technology. We visualize them, we know what they look like. We know the different levels and layers to the blockchain. And that's all it essentially is. Now, I did start talking about uh, the cryptography within the blockchain briefly just to help me explain how the 
uh, the hashes were um, how the hashes actually come to be within a block okay with the previous blocks hash and the current block hash where do they come from and that they are rehashed okay so there's a bunch of different cryptographic processes going on which actually link all the blocks together so we're not going to worry about that too much for now again we're going to be talking about that more when we learn about bitcoin but that is essentially the blockchain technology as a bit of an overview um, for you so going on with this module we've got the decentralized web next okay so that's what blockchain is going to allow us to do for a alternate application okay to decentralize the entire internet so i will see you in that next module